Good morning. I love hearing this hum of enthusiasm and energy. You're all happy to see each other. Maybe it helps that it's nice and cool outside. It helps me. Good morning and welcome to worship with Willow Avenue Mennonite Church. Whether you are here with us in person or worshiping with us online, we are so glad to be together this morning. If we haven't met before, I'm Audrey Hines, senior pastor here at Willow Avenue, where Jesus welcomes all and so do we. Today is the 11th Sunday of our summer worship series, Flourish, the story of God with us. This series is meant to proclaim a positive vision of God's desire for the flourishing of all people and all creation. Each Sunday, we have had a different theme word that has been creating a prayer path through the biblical story of God with us. These words show us both the chronological story of God with us, as well as help us to see beyond a mere timeline that there are many points of entry on the path in this journey of our life in God. Our journey on this path brings us at last to the final prayer station today, home. Many of you sent in pictures and video clips this week of what home is to you. And so we'll watch our home video montage now uh, with the Waylon Jennings song, Heaven When We're Home. And we will uh, get to see this again as the postlude at the conclusion of our service. I'm 
these bags and search no more Cause it's gonna feel like heaven when we're alone And it's a long and rugged road And we don't know where he's headed But we know it's gonna get us where we're born And where we find what we're looking for Drop these bags and search no more Cause it's gonna feel like heaven when we're So again, thanks for sending in your photos and your video clips of what home is to you. And because it's kind of hard to take it all in on the first viewing, we will play it again for the postlude so you'll have another chance to see it. We're grateful to Lynn Jost for his prayerful preparation of his homily this morning and for bringing this series home for us. As always, you are invited to text your prayer requests to 559-960-8777, and those will be shared aloud a little bit later in the service. And now I invite us to take a moment in silence to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to stand in body or spirit for our opening hymn, number 809, Sing a New World into Being. Wait. 
Please be seated. Good morning to the children. I'd like to invite the children to come up here with me. I know last week you got to stay in the canopy and Stefan actually came to you, but we really need your help outside the canopy today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, uh, good news or bad news? Good news? The good news is next week, Godly Play starts back up again. Yay! <laughs> What's the bad, sad uh, kind of news? Today's the last Sunday of the Canopy of Wonder for the summer. I know, but everybody started school now, yeah? Started school, yeah? Okay, and summer's come to an end, and the canopy's going to go down until next summer, and school is starting, and godly play is starting. Seasons change, right? But what doesn't change is that God loves you, and that God is always with you. And sometimes songs help us to remember that. Songs somehow get things from our heads and get them stuck in our hearts. And then you know what happens when we really learn a song? Sometimes a song just starts playing all on its own. Your head doesn't start it. Somehow your heart just starts a song. That ever happened to you? No? Hmm. All right. We need to work on that. So we're going to sing a song, but we need your help because this is new for the grown-ups. We have sung it a few times, but we need your help. So we're going to sing, do you remember the song, Like a Rock? It's about God being with us all the time in all the ways that we can look around us and remember that God loves us and that God is always with us, okay? All right, so um, Joe's gonna help us with the hand motions. Yes? That's right. And you're gonna help us with the hand motions. All right, let's do this. And the congregation's gonna help us with the hand motions. Let's all stay seated, but we're gonna let Karen and Steve play the, the song once through and I'm gonna do the hand motions and let's all do it together, okay? So much for your help you can go back to the canopy for the last sunday and the next sunday after we finish the children's blessing you will get to go back to godly play it's so exciting i love godly play do you love godly play yeah awesome okay remember that god loves you and that we love you and we're so glad you're here okay <laughs> As we unite our hearts together with God's in prayer for the church, community, and world, a reminder that you are welcome to text your joys and concerns to 
960-8777, and we will share those aloud in just a moment. Jan Richardson writes, I think that somehow nearly every blessing is about hope and about drawing us a little closer to home, even in those times when, by choice or by accident, we find ourselves far beyond what is familiar to us. Wherever you are, this is for you. And may this poem of hers be our prayer today. It's called Blessing the House of the Heart. If you could see how this blessing shimmers inside you, you would never wonder whether there will be light enough, time enough, room enough for you. If you could see the way this blessing has inscribed itself on every wall of your heart, writing its shining line across every doorway, tracing the edge of every window and table and hall. If you could see this, you would never question whether home or whether it has a welcome for you. This blessing wishes to give you a glimpse. It will not tell you it has been waiting. It will not tell you it has been keeping watch. It would not want you to know just how long it has been holding this quiet vigil for you. It simply wants you to see what it sees, wants you to know what it knows, how this blessing already blazes in you, shining in every corner of your broken and beautiful heart. And now as we lift up the prayers from within our own community for the church, community, and world, I will end each petition with the words, Lord, in your great love, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. We pray for peace for war-torn nation and world in the face of race-based killings in light of half a million lives lost in Ukraine. Lord, in your great love. From Linda Shamika, we pray for Matondo's friend Joe, who learned yesterday that his nine-year-old son died last month from a drowning accident. As well as Joe's other family and friends, Frank and Janetta, they support him in his grief. We pray for the broken families and inadequately housed friends of Matondo Shamika. Lord, in your great love. We pray for Bill Thiel as he waits to have another stent placed in his heart to aid the blockage of two arteries that are entering his heart. God, we pray that you would give him peace as he waits and healing in his body from this procedure. And we pray that his lupus diagnosis, which has been updated to rheumatoid arthritis, will bring appropriate treatment for his symptoms. Lord, in your great love. With Dennis and Nancy Becker, we celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary this coming Wednesday. We give you thanks for these many years of love, joy, companionship, partnership, and witness. Lord, in your great love. From Gary Barber. Gratitude for being able to celebrate his third sobriety anniversary today. We pray for traveling mercies as he travels to San Francisco today to meet with his sponsor family for dinner, where he will be given his third year chip. We pray for him as he is taking a full sheet cake on the train so that all at the meeting can celebrate with him tonight. He invites all to join with their favorite dessert at their homes at, five, at 7.30 in celebrating in gratitude 
for the redeeming goodness and grace of God in his life and in all their lives. Lord, in your great love. We lift up all of these prayers, spoken and unspoken. Thank you, God, that no matter where we are on our journey of this life, that you are with us and that you are our home. Amen. We continue our time of prayer by singing ubi caritas, which means where there is charity. And charity is an old word for generous giving to help those who are suffering and in need. Today's Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah. Please listen. The Lord says, act justly and do what is righteous, because my salvation is coming soon, and my righteousness will be revealed. Don't let the immigrant who is joined with the Lord say, the Lord will exclude me from the people. And don't let the eunuch said, I am just a dry tree. The Lord says to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, choose what I desire and remain loyal to my covenant. In my temple and courts, I will give them a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an enduring name that won't be removed. The immigrants who have joined me, serving me and loving my name, becoming my servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath without making it impure, and those who hold fast to my covenant. I will bring them to my holy mountain, and I will bring them joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their entirely burned offerings and sacrifices on my altar. My house will be known as a house of prayer for all peoples. Says the Lord God who gathers Israel's outcasts, I will gather still others, those who I've already gathered. May we find wisdom in these ancient words. Amen. Amen. 
two in your hymnals, and we're going to sing a new song. I am reading from Revelation chapter 21. <clears throat> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a beautiful bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's people. And God's self will be with them and be their God, who will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the Spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, 
coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty in the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun nor moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light. And its lamp, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. God's will, people will bring into the glory, its people will bring it into the glory and the honor of the nations. May we find God's wisdom in these words. can be a journey. In our next song, we'll start by singing the first verse in Spanish, all three verses in English, and then the last verse as the first verse of Spanish once again. And if you have any question, just watch the screen, the words will be up there too. <laughs> Somos pueblo que camina por la senda de dolor. Acudamos jubilosos a la santa comunión. Acudamos jubilosos a la santa comunión. We are people on a journey. Pain is with us all the way. Joyfully we come together at the holy feast of God. Joyfully we come together at the holy feast of God. God has sent the invitation to the humble and the poor. Joyfully we come together at the holy feast of God. Joyfully we come together at the holy feasts of God. All who are truly thirst for this seek their liberation here. Joyfully we come together at the holy feasts of God. Joyfully we come together at the holy feasts of God. Somos pueblo que camina por las sendas del dolor. Acudamos jubilosos a la santa comunión. Acudamos jubilosos a la santa comunión. Oh, thank you, Audrey and Joe, for those wonderful songs. Uh, the sermon's been preached. We are home. I can't help but interrupt the service to say congratulations to Stefan. And the fact that he's even here this morning, uh, he's been directing a play that he wrote in Selma. And uh, because of COVID, they had a extra coda kind of a performance last night and here he is again today some of us got to see it last week congratulate stefan with me would you and i don't know how many other things we're celebrating but it was pretty sneaky dennis to try to do a prayer for yourself instead of uh, letting us congratulate you so welcome to your whole family and congratulations to them can i He didn't send it, Audrey said it. But anyway, let's congratulate him and them, I mean, all of them. You're not sneaky at all, Dennis. Okay. A couple of the people in the audience today are taking a preaching class from me, and I'm warning you, don't ever try this. Uh, it's a bad idea, but, I'm going to tell you about the sermon I was planning to preach until I decided on the sermon I'm going to preach. So the sermon I was going to preach comes from John Killinger, a great preacher from the previous century. 
uh, who starts by remembering an old Folgers commercial, 1985, Peter's Home for Christmas. Uh, Peter unloads from the Volkswagen that brought him through the snow early on Christmas morning, comes into his home, and uh, he's home from college, I guess. Everything is quiet except the Christmas tree lights, and so he goes straight to the kitchen and starts making Folgers coffee. And that smell begins to waken first his little niece and then his mother, and finally the whole clan is gathered together around good to the last drop, Folgers coffee. And then John Killinger goes on to talk about Jesus' birth and goes into the details about why Jesus was not born in a cave or a stable, but actually the word is that he was, there was no room for them in the living room. So they had to put him uh, eh, kind of in the place where animals would spend the night on a cold night in a first century peasant home. And so he's born uh, because Joseph, remember, came home for the taxes to his home country. He's born among aunts and uncles and cousins and laid right there in the middle of all of them in the living room. Home. That was the sermon I was going to preach, and I was going to invite you, and I will anyway, to take a deep breath and just experience the joy of being home. Remember those beautiful photos we saw? We've been on a journey, the last song told us, all summer long trying to get to the end of, uh, it's sort of an Anabaptist stations of the, not the cross, but the way. That's a prayer path. So, we've gone through the discipline of, of these previous images, and we're home. Tears are wiped away. This is where you belong, your place, your home. You feel it? I hope you do. Okay, so that was a sermon I was going to preach, but then I ran into a, a brief article in the New York Times by Militia Kish in which she reflects on coming home after a week of vacation. And it's a different way of thinking about what happens when you get home. Uh, she says that it's good to be home, sure, but home is also absurd. It's absurd because you realize after you've been living out of a suitcase for a week that it's really kind of foolish to have uh, a second sweatshirt. You don't need all this stuff. In fact, she says, she has a friend who told her, everything that I own becomes, okay, let's try this again. Everything you buy makes you what you already own less valuable. Okay, everything you buy makes everything you already own less valuable. So the question that comes to you when you're on vacation is, why do I have all this stuff? And then furthermore, as you're thinking about coming home, you ask yourself, why do I have such boring routines? Why wouldn't I, wouldn't, why wouldn't I make Saturday morning more interesting? Why do we always eat the same thing? Or, on the other hand, why is life so complicated? When I'm traveling, I don't have to worry about all that stuff. Every time I go with students to uh, Mexico or another culture, uh, they ask themselves, why are we so busy at home? It's, everything is so hospitable here where we are. So, coming home helps us recognize the absurdity of our lives. And Melissa Kish's experience was reinforced by Breakfast with Bill, Bill Braun this week. We were thinking, he had given me a hint about how a couple of weeks in Maui years, decades ago, had changed his life, their lives. 
And it wasn't the time away, really. Kind of like when I fall off my bike, it's not falling that bothers me, it's the sudden stop that hurts. And so it was with their vacation time. Was being away was great, but when they got back, they asked themselves, why have we allowed ourselves to get into this rut? What more is there in life? And their lives, and the like Central Committee and decades of leading our congregation are demonstration of what happens when you stop and ask yourself, why have we allowed ourselves to get caught in these ruts and these routines? The people who had come back from exile. Isaiah 56. Remember, Israelites were in their land and then they did wrong and according to the scripture their punishment was to be carried away to Babylon into exile gone 70 years they come back great promises about how wonderful the trip home is going to be they're going to be home and then stuff doesn't turn out all that great so a few decades later they're still reflecting on this experience and that's Isaiah 56 which asks oh, how do we how do we make sense of being home and Isaiah 56 says, well, for one thing, you've got to open your doors to others. And Isaiah 56 explicitly reverses some earlier commandments about who's welcome. Deuteronomy 23 is the great text that makes clear who's excluded, who shouldn't come in. Among them are the Moabites. Of course, Ruth is another story that says, no, 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 you got this all sc uh, screwed up. The Moabites should be welcome here too. Ruth marries Boaz and becomes an ancestor of David and Jesus. That's the way it should work. But Deuteronomy 23 says, no, no Moabites. It goes on to say anybody who uh, has a kind of different sexual expression is also excluded. Uh, it's a little graphic, Deuteronomy 23, 1 and 2, you can take a look at it. Those people are excluded too. Isaiah 56 explicitly says, no, people with a different sexual expression are welcome. The eunuchs can come in. They're part of my community too. In fact, he goes on to say, my house will be house of prayer for all the nations. Sometimes we say, well, a house is not a home, but God's house is God's home, our home, a home of prayer. The Revelation text reminds us of this as well, as it says, just struck me out as you read it, uh, God is uh, the, the gates are always open during the day and there's no night well i guess that means they're, it's open all the time doesn't it must mean that and god is the light who is attracting all the peoples together to this home so a couple of questions uh for us as we come to the end of our journey one is uh let's make sure that we're imitating god in that as we breathe in the joy of being home we're also uh, inviting others to be a part of this home with us over and over again when we hear the testimonies of new people coming to church they say this is a place i belong last week that was the sermon we start with belonging how do we extend that belonging to others one question. The other question is, if you've been on the journey all summer and you're home, what do you see that's absurd around here? What is it that doesn't quite make sense? Could be as uh, specific as, as a congregation we voted to be welcoming. Is it necessary, is it important, is it helpful for us now to have a ritual of welcome, of repentance, of change? Uh, maybe. How about the absurdity of our world? Isn't it absurd that every time there's a disagreement politically, we're at war with everybody else? 
who started this thing anyway. You know, it's not just the Trump Republicans that are at war. Others respond back with war. Is that the way it should be? Is that the way it should be in here? Uh, why isn't there any other way to settle the problems of the, of the world? Could it be because as Americans we've got more guns than people? Maybe there's a, another way to think about the way in which we live as the people of God. The invitation of this text is to recognize the way in which God is welcoming radically. Last week, the lectionary reading uh, people of other congregations are still using came from Matthew's Gospel where the Canaanite woman comes to Jesus. And the disciples say, shut her up. She keeps yelling at us. And Jesus says, I wasn't sent to the last sheep of Israel. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. I wasn't sent to the ones beyond that. And of course, she comes back with a very wise answer that says, yes, but even the puppies eat the scraps that come from the table. And Jesus is moved to be welcoming of her. He goes across the lake and feeds 4,000 Gentiles. Talk about radical hospitality. I invite you. In a moment, Janice will come and give us instructions about how to mark our papers. As you draw the lines of home on that page, consider what it means for you to recognize the absurdity of home and to see it transformed the way God would invite us to be inviting of others. Thanks be to God. First this morning, I want to say how thankful I am to be at home in a church that um, recognizes the visual arts and beauty. Uh, what a gift to me. What a gift to all of you. Um, thank you. And thank you all for your cooperation over the past weeks in this drawing experiment that we have been uh, working on. And this morning, again, a reminder that just a few lines on a piece of paper, how do you, how do you express home, the feeling of home, being home, making a home? The papers are in the baskets next to you. Please respond with a few lines, put your work back in the basket and Pass them to the end of the row when you're finished. Thank you so much. Once I invite you to turn in your hymnals to 652, and when you're ready, join us in singing Before the Waters Nourish the Earth. This love remained as 
as time revealed the loss of Eden's glory and grieving holds in memory each tragic human story. So deep it bears no name, O oh, sorrows paralyzing, cannot revoke love's faithful claim to dwell within a dark. A very warm welcome to guests and visitors who are here with us this morning. We invite you to stay and join us for refreshments across the courtyard in the fellowship hall immediately following the service. There are second hour options listed on the right hand side at the top of your bulletin. So we hope that you will find the thing that is most suitable for you. Thank you for the ways that so many of you give your time, your gifts, your finances here at Willow Avenue. We talk about this in terms of whole life giving, and some of you give uh, online, some of you give in the box in the back, and we are grateful for all of these ways that you give to the life and mission and ministry of this community. Uh, thank you to Elaine Beckham and Linda Clausen for serving refreshments today, and I believe there's a note in the insert about uh, dessert that is being shared today from for Dennis and Nancy's anniversary, so we hope that you will enjoy that as well. Finally, is Steve Regeer in here? I believe he's taking photos. If you are interested in a new photo for the church directory, I believe Steve will be taking photos today and next week. So that's a, an opportunity if you'd like to update your photo in the church directory. Uh, there's more announcements in that insert, so I hope that you will take a look at that. And I think Ken Newfeld has an update from Resource Ministries. Thank you very much. Uh, Resource Ministries is very thankful to the congregation that we are a giving church and that financial stewardship is part of our shared life as a congregation. As of the end of July, we had passed 58% of the year and by the numbers, we have spent 55% of our budget. So that sounds good, right? Not quite as good as that we took in 48% of our budgeted congregational offerings. So we're a little short. And so year to date, we're approximately $35,000 short of what we spent. And this does happen from year to year. So we're not too alarmed, but we should let everybody know that's where we are. So what does our money actually do? Sometimes it's good for us to know, I mean, what, why are we giving money? How do we spend it? Well, to, $200 covers the monthly cost of printing. $500 covers the cost of six months of godly play. $750 covers the cost of banners in the sanctuary. $1,250 covers one month of music ministry. $3,300, we're going up in price here. $3,300 covers the cost of six months of insurance. 
and $5,000 covers our support for our missionaries, Pakisa and Linda Chamika. So giving this concrete uh, evidence of what, how we spend our money, we encourage you to, as you're able to continue to support these and other ministries. Thank you very much. A special thanks to Karen, who plays so beautifully at least a few Sundays a month. Thank you so much for being here. And today she brought her family. Her husband, Steve, is here playing clarinet. Your music is a blessing. Thank you for being here. I invite you all to stand and turn to number 377, our closing hymn. Receive now this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and give you peace. Amen, and go in peace. But stay and watch the postlude.
Drop these bags and search no more. 